Welcome back everyone, time to get back into some military hardware reviews and today we are talking about attack helicopters, a kind of a fancy weird one. Uh, any of you have watched GoldenEye, you'll obviously know exactly what kind of aircraft this is. We are going to be talking about the Tiger attack helicopter made by the European Coalition um, that pretty much put Germany, France and Spain together and now Australia to produce a quite capable attack helicopter. Uh, strangely enough though, there has been quite a bit of controversy about this aircraft recently and Germany is trying their best to defend her in her capabilities around the world. Unfortunately, and maybe a video for another day, Australia has decided to eventually replace this aircraft by about 2020, but still an extremely capable um, piece of equipment and uh, as usual, we'll go over its history, specifications and finally my take on it. Now, I won't lie to you all, uh, this is not my favourite attack helicopter in the world, not for the fact that I don't think it's capable, purely for the fact that I can only rely on something that I've had experiences with to really put my true opinion on. And the Apache helicopter served me uh, in Afghanistan, protecting me, uh, providing overwatch and support, so hands down I'm always going to love the Apache helicopter, that's not saying it's the best in the world. But my heart lies with that aircraft because it has served and protected me in an operational theatre. So the Tiger has a distinction of being the first all composite helicopter developed in Europe. Today there are 140 in service around the world with a total of 94,000 flight hours. Germany, France and Spain all together for a unique military project put this together. Since 2003 these are the armies of the three European countries all using the EC665 Tiger. The twin engine attack helicopter created in 1989 by Eurocopter, known today as the Airbus helicopter. The Tiger HAD is designed to perform armed reconnaissance, air or ground escort, air to air combat, ground firing support, destruction and anti-tank warfare. Also it is a day or night and in adverse conditions capable aircraft. This helicopter really has proven its capabilities during many operational deployments in both Afghanistan, Central African Republic, Somalia, Libya, Mali, you name it, this aircraft has pretty much done a lot of work there and obviously with the German military and NATO forces in uh, Europe right now it's still on guard, standing by in case anything does potentially kick off. As mentioned there are a lot of flight hours on this aircraft so therefore it is in need of major upgrades and the military around the world that operate this aircraft have put a lot of money and a lot of research into making sure that the aircraft is kept up to standards. The enhanced Tiger HAD variant provides an air to ground missile capability, improved target acquisition and ballistic protection, 14% more power and an evolved electronic warfare suite with the latest integrated systems. To be honest with you folks, this aircraft has had some rough times, um, you know, it's an aircraft that is really a little bit ahead of its time uh, for when it started because they were really trying to put a lot of electronics into this aircraft that just weren't quite ready for it. Um, there were some running pains with it for sure, but today with the upgrade packages that it has, it is an extremely capable attack helicopter. Um, the story of the Tiger starts back in 1984, right in the middle of obviously the Cold War. Both French and German governments created a joint venture for producing a new attack helicopter. The aircraft was supposed to fight against Soviet armoured fighting vehicles in a then not so hypothetical conflict. Aerospital, in cooperation with MBB formed after the merger of Messerschmitt, began its first studies for developing a European manufactured attack helicopter. The project was then put in a forced hiatus from 1986 to 1987 because of its high production costs. However, it was later relaunched in November 1989 when France and Germany gave the green light of the production of five initial prototypes for assessment. This aircraft was pretty much born as a pure anti-tank helicopter. The EC665 Tiger was gradually modified to accomplish a higher number of missions for the Cold War era, including supporting of troops on the ground and providing reconnaissance elements. The reconnaissance element was actually one of the key weaknesses of this aircraft due to the fact that it actually had a very difficult time getting the kind of optics that they required on this aircraft. Several different configurations were designed for the Tiger's attack version. The French engineers chose the most enhanced weaponry available in the Western Bloc. So the aircraft had equipped with a 30mm GIAT 30M781 cannon and up to 8 AGM114 Hellfire anti-armour missiles which were pretty standard for those days as well up to 4 Stinger anti-aircraft missiles if it came to it which to be honest if you're in an aircraft like a helicopter as an attack role trying to support armour the last thing you want to do is come up against an MI-24 launching bloody stingers at it. 
The EC665 Tiger can reach a maximum speed of 146 knots, or 271 km an hour, with a range of 515 miles, or 973 km. Unlike its main market rivals, the Tiger's design has opted for an unusual configuration of the seats. The pilot seat placed inside the tandem cockpit is actually placed in front of the co-pilot gunner seat. Furthermore, both members of the crew can use commands and military equipment, swapping their roles in case of emergency, which, as usual for most aircraft in this particular configuration, is standard. The Tiger HAD is a highly agile helicopter benefiting from a 13-meter, four-bladed, hingeless main rotor. It is likewise powerful thanks to two enhanced MTR 390 turboshaft engines. Avionics incorporated on the Tiger HAD are the Eurogrid battlefield management systems and the digital map display systems that are integrated with the radio and satellite communications along with data transfer links. It does have an IFF transponder, interrogator and an high authority 4 axis digital automatic flight control system which provides the ability for the pilot and the gunner to really operate the aircraft without having to worry too much about flying it if they have to focus on multiple targets which of course in the Cold War era was a big priority. We wanted to make sure that we could hunt as many targets on screen as possible without having to worry too much about flying over the top of the wood line uh, and potentially smashing into 100 trees. The gyro stabilized roof mounted site has a TV camera, thermal imager, laser rangefinder, laser designator and laser spot tracker capable of simultaneously following up to four targets. Unlike the Longbow Apache helicopter, this aircraft does have a limited capability of locking up and engaging multiple targets on the battlefield. However, it does have future capabilities of communicating with multiple other Tiger helicopters to make a defensive net of multiple tracking of targets on the battlefield. In addition, the Tiger HAD has a combat external fuel tank for longer mission flight times an extended flight domain in which spike and hellfire anti-tank missiles can be fired. It also has digital communications for the modern digitized battlefield within most countries around the world. Like most European weaponry, it does have a choice of two different guns, the GIAT 30 series 30mm cannon or the German Rheinmetall 30mm cannon, which gives a little bit interoperability between forces and uh, basically a little bit more choice to each military force. To date, the Tiger has appeared in four major versions coinciding in their use for the host countries. The Tiger HAP is the French close attack version, capable of air-to-air -air and air-to-ground engagements through the use of its 30mm chin turret, missiles and rocket pods. The UH Tiger represents a multi-role derivative for use of the German forces. Anti-tank missiles and rocket pods are the order of the day for the model and the German produced 30mm autocannon on the chin turret mounting. The Tiger ARH is an armed reconnaissance model used by the Australian armed forces to replace their UH-1 Hueys or the OH-58 Kiowa systems. These Tigers will be fitted with the improved MTR390 series engines and feature a 70mm rocket pod and capability of the Hellfire 2 anti-tank missile system. The Tiger HAD is the Tiger of choice for the Spanish Army and French forces, utilizing anti-tank missiles and improved MTR390 series engines of 1,464 shaft horsepower. The Eurocopter Tiger was introduced at an operational level in 2003. The only active future users of this helicopter system are Spain, France, Germany, Australia and Saudi Arabia. Australian Tigers are assembled in Australia. Eurocopter maintains a presence in the country, while Saudis inked a 2006 deal for up to 142 Tigers in multiple different versions. In all, it's expected that the Euro Tiger will maintain a healthy, quite long shelf life throughout Europe and beyond. However, as mentioned, Australia will be replacing this aircraft in 2020. Unfortunately, due to a July 2017 crash of a Tiger helicopter in Mali, it has led some forces suspending operations with the attack platform until the results of the entire incident can be handled. The two crew were lost and the main rotor blades broke off after entering a very steep dive. One of the most impressive features of this aircraft is it can do the loop the loop, which you'll see in multiple different, you know, air shows and such, and it looks amazing. Uh, but at the end of the day, guys, it's one of those things that it doesn't need to do and it's not required to do, and I don't quite understand why we still showcase its ability to do so. It's not getting into dogfights. I find it to be quite a kind of a risky thing to be putting their pilots under. You know, I know air shows and all that good stuff, but I mean helicopters really shouldn't be doing the loop the loop just in my eyes uh, these things are designed to do what they're doing that, that you see right now engaging armor from long distance popping and shooting scooting from behind wood lines and such and you know the tiger has done a damn good job of that it has had a uh, you know some incidences where 
you know, there's been accidents and such, but overall, I mean, the German military are very proud of this aircraft, and they've stuck true to it for quite some time and continue to do so. I've got to admit, it looks very, um, it looks extremely futuristic to me. It almost looks like the Havoc. Ever since I saw the GoldenEye movie, you know, I kind of just fell in love with this aircraft a little bit. It just looks really, really cool. Funnily enough, though, the Australian military is looking into replacing this aircraft with the Apache, uh, you know, from the Americans, because... At the moment, what they're saying is the long-term average cost per flight hour for this aircraft is 39,472 Australian dollars per hour. It is claimed within the defense sector of Australia that the rival Apache helicopter that's been brought into place as a flight hour cost is slightly more than $16,000 or about half of what Tigers are currently achieving. But the plot thickens because the flight hour costs are notoriously difficult to compare. And at the case of the Tigers, it would appear that defense industry has pretty much included everything except the kitchen sink in coming what they think is the shockingly high number. Basically, the Australian military has said, you know what, we want something better. We want something new and good for them. Um, I'm not saying that the Tiger is not a good aircraft, but I really do feel that, you know, with the new standard of Apaches that are coming out and the new upgrade packages that are coming out, it just makes more sense um, to transition to you know, equipment that is more standardized between forces that are, especially within the Commonwealth, you know, the UK and Australia, it makes sense. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, the Australians committed to a program that involved Europe and maybe they don't want to let go of that program. I don't know. But whatever happened in Mali is now done. And the German military has actually said that the Airbus Tiger helicopters can resume flights. Um, one of the ministry officials have said that the Flight Safety Commission has recommended allowing flights for all the helicopters but with conditions on speed, weight, and use of the autopilot system. The order that they've given also requires additional safety inspections to be made. They did say that Tiger pilots to be very careful of rapid switches from autopilot to manual mode during turbulence, after initial indications show that such a switch may have played a role in the July crash that killed both crew members. Scary stuff, guys. You know, you'd expect um, high-tech technology like this to be able to transition between modes quite easily, you know. But uh, maybe it's something that they've just, you know, not noticed. It's, it's never really come up until someone's got it to that perimeter, the human factors kind of thing. Um, but an extremely impressive aircraft overall, folks. I don't have any problems with the Tiger. I know a couple of my buddies who actually uh, live in Australia, they don't have much love for the Tiger. Um, I think it's mainly for the fact that they are starry-eyed for the Apache. A lot of people are, myself included. I won't lie, I'm a little biased. That's not saying I don't respect this aircraft. But uh, after hearing about the crash and, you know, the fact that the aircraft really does have less targeting system data than, say, the Apache does and even some Russian equipment, um, it's a little concerning. And maybe Germany is going to increase the upgrade packaging capabilities to these aircraft even more or France or Spain or whoever else. But it's definitely for sure that Australia will replace this aircraft by 2020 and it's going to be interesting to see which route they go down. Um, overall, great aircraft and I do have a lot of respect for it. but. Some definite uh, worrying moments for this aircraft and its future for most of Europe too. We'll see what they do. Thank you so much for joining my video today, folks. If you do want to support my channel, please feel free to go check out my Patreon account. Uh, hit me up on Facebook and uh, hit that little bell button by the subscribe button so you can be notified of any upcoming videos in the future. Um, plenty more videos upcoming with military equipment, folks. Leave the comment section uh, which one you'd like me to do next and I'll try to get around to it. All the best, have a wonderful day, and bye-bye.